I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6pm, which I feel would make women a lot safer, and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. Hey, madam, do you need to step outside for me a minute? Can you, can you come outside? Yes. Thank you. He's on the kitchen floor. Okay, at this moment in time, okay, if you just listen to my colleague, um, under a suspicion of attempt murder, mate. Can I get my coat? We'll get you right, get the ambulance in, pronto. We need oh, CPR. Oh, no, 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 please don't. Yeah, we need oh, the ambulance in. should have stabbed him a bit more. We've got CPR being done at the moment. <laughs> Growing up as a young boy in the UK, at some point you find a woman to be your wife. You settle down, you have kids, you live that normal happy life which has forever been the natural evolvement of boys to men. It's what makes me able to speak to you today about this topic that is more in season than the weather. And this topic is what to expect when finding a partner in the UK. <laughs> now different countries have different laws in place to protect and serve the people of that country human rights is something that is supposed to protect everyone on the planet but if you live in the uk or you're planning to travel here for love there are a few extra things that every man needs to know in order to survive. Surviving as a man in the UK requires extra knowledge in regards to relationships with the opposite sex. Because you, you met her at college uh, in 2012, you were both 16, this was your first relationship. What, what was she like? How did that relationship begin? It was fine, it was good and it, was, it seemed normal. Yeah. and everything was going very well and then it all started to go a little bit. Well, there were, there were sort of signs, weren't they, warning signs early on. She, she liked game playing with you. You'd go on holiday and, and she'd disappear for long yeah, periods of time. Was, and you, you say she, was, um, she is a, an intelligent woman, um, but, but she used that against you. Yeah, she was academically very bright. She got a lot of A's, went to university, obviously, and I wasn't of that type. For the first time in history, there is now a wide-ranging legal definition of domestic abuse in the UK, which goes beyond physical violence, including emotional, cohesive or controlling behaviour and economic abuse. Controlling or cohesive behaviour, which happens post-separation, will also be counted as abuse. Domestic abuse is horrible. Any normal person knows that. You don't need me to say this. We all agree. It's reported that there are 2. million victims of domestic abuse a year, aged 16 to 74, two thirds of whom are women, and more than one in 10 of all offenses recorded by the police are domestic abuse related. I wanna talk about domestic violence and how much men suffer domestic abuse at the hands of their partner. This right here is Courtney Clenny. She is a woman that stabbed to death her boyfriend, Christian, who's pictured. Christian was subjected to an immense amount of abuse, physically, mentally, emotionally, racially. She abused Christian on a regular basis. And this wasn't the first time that she had stabbed him. She had stabbed him in the leg previously. She had beaten him up with a mobile phone. She had attacked him in a lift, which was all recorded. And she had abused him on a daily basis. Days before she killed him, she got a restraining order out against him. Now, some say that might be a coincidence and she may well have feared for her life. But some also say that was premeditated because she knew what was coming and she knows she can't control herself. So she's using that now, the self-defense, I'm a battered girlfriend, I'm the one that suffered in the relationship to try and get a lesser sentence for killing Christian. I wonder, do you think it's justified? 
In December 2019, the government was elected with a new manifesto committed to support all victims of domestic abuse and pass the Domestic Abuse Bill, originally introduced in the last parliament. The Act aims to ensure that victims have the confidence to come forward and report their experiences, safe in the knowledge that the state will do everything that it can, both to support them and their children. On the Crown Prosecution Service website, it states that the Violence Against Women and Girls strategy provides an overarching framework for crimes identified as being primarily committed, but not exclusively by men against women, within a context of power and control. Now see, the words not exclusively by men makes no sense to me. I mean, what is the strategy actually called? The strategy is called Violence Against Women and Girls. By the title alone, this strategy was never about protecting men or boys. The strategy does what it says on the tin, and that's to protect women and girls. But this is okay. I'm sure if I search on the internet, I will find the opposite, you know, for men and boys. You can do the search for yourself and you see the same thing that I saw. Now look, domestic abuse is wrong and should be stopped. But in a relationship, there is more than one person. So what happens when you have laws that protect one person and not the other? It's like asking me what happens if I jump off the 14th floor onto a pointed steel fence. It's so 2016, question, really. you move in together and this is yeah. where the, the physical abuse yeah. starts. Um, and I mean, this, this started off where she'd be hitting you over the head with bottles and... Yeah, yeah. And knives were used also. In what way? How did she... Have, have well, it started off, I was lying in the bed and she would wait till I was asleep and just hit me on the head with a bottle. I managed to get rid of the bottle without her knowing. And then she moved on to a hammer. She started hitting me with hammers everywhere, like my shins, arms, head. Um, and then I managed to throw that hammer in the field opposite. So I thought, oh, it's over. But then everything she could find to hit me with, from bits she... of wood, yeah. The definition of domestic abuse in the UK, which goes beyond physical violence, including emotional, cohesive or controlling behaviour, and economic abuse. Physical violence is just a no-go. We agree on that. I don't wish violence on anybody, including emotional. Hmm. Who are more emotional, men or women? Correct. Next question. Is there not a danger here that anything a man does can be classed as emotional abuse? I mean, as a man, we've all been in a situation where we have a fallout with a woman to which you said nothing untrue. But she said, it's not what you said, it's the way you said it. I thought so. We've all had it. Maybe women want men to speak like them, but we can't do that. We are different. Men and women are different and always will be. He's an aggressive bully and nasty and I've had enough. And when he said, you won't do it, I did it twice more. When finding a partner in the UK as a man, you must remember, you have no rights in the relationship. When things go wrong, you have no support system in place. You're on your own. You can now actually be put on the ex-offenders record for, wait for it, emotional abuse to whatever context that is. Oh yeah, I know. You tell her that she's putting on a bit too much weight and she gets emotional about it. Now you're going on the ex-offenders record. Good luck with that. She can do and say anything about me. Lies to the authorities, raise false allegations, alienate my child against me and there, is nothing I can do about it. I have no right. The authorities were on her side, despite there being no evidence it was assumed that I was guilty of abusing her. Second on the list is the calibre of women you are likely to find in the UK. Front ways. I've just dislocated my own hips. Where? <laughs> Cut your hip back in and do it again. To be, able, to be a samurai, you've got to be able to take the pain on your own body before you can 
even hit another, right? It's extreme. Do the crouching Finish. tiger. Sure. Do the crouching yeah. tiger. Yeah. Do you like me? Huh? Do you like me? <laughs> well, I, don't even, I don't even know you. <clears throat> I rate the outfit of what you got on today, though. You got a nice outfit, can't lie. <laughs> yeah. You got a beautiful laugh. What? You got a beautiful laugh as well. Who, me? Yeah, you, yeah. I got a beautiful what? Laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Selecting a partner is where many people mess up. I've done it, we've all done it. There's two types of men in the UK. Men that go for looks and men that settle for whatever they can get. Now, which of these two men would you follow? We already know that looks fade and with a poor personality, you're just wasting your time. Settling for whoever's interested just means that she's not your first choice. And again, time is the most valuable thing we have. Now the UK has many attractive women in every town and every city. But if you're looking for a homemaker, a good cook, a woman that is going to respect you as a man, then you would be better off just choosing another country. Women in the UK are just not raised to be like that. Out of all the things going on in our lives, the only things that make or break us are other people. Now in my book, I talk about the relationships that you don't want to build. The relationships that when built, are not built on good foundations. Whatever you're going through right now in the dating market, just know you have many options. Until next time, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> I saw potential in another brother's baby